With 2023 coming to a close, we have yet another year of MMA on the horizon. A lot of potential upsets, a lot of potential unknowns that could happen. In this video, I wanna give you guys five bold predictions, things that I think are gonna happen in the MMA world in 2024. For my first prediction, I've actually already made a video kind of touching on this briefly. I'm gonna go ahead and say that Alexander Volkanovsky is gonna lose his belt at featherweight. I said in my video that I thought he was gonna lose to Ilya Topuria. I think that's probably a very likely matchup that he would lose to. I think regardless, he's gonna lose his belt at some point in 2024. I saw some stat recently that fighters uh, in title fights like over the age of 35 or 35 and over are like one in something in title fights. It's like, it's not a good, or they may even be O in something. It's really late. It's like, it's not a good number at all. Basically kind of the writings on the wall that Volk is gonna lose. My second bold prediction for the UFC in 2024, I'm gonna say that John Jones is going to retire. Most likely he's just gonna get healthy. He's gonna have the Stipe Miocic fight and probably retire after that. I think that's probably the only thing left that he really has to check off. Realistically, like if he beats Stipe, he beat the, the heavyweight GOAT. Uh, there's not really anyone else that I could see him wanting to fight other than young, hungry, up-and-coming contenders, Tom Aspinall, people like that. Which, yes, he could fight, but that's when you really kind of open up those those areas of, is he fighting too long? But I do think the more you keep fighting, if you, you know, let give a, enough young prospects, enough opportunities, it's bound to happen. He's already had a few close calls. I think it would be smart if he fights Stipe Miocic. Whether he wins, he loses, I think he retires after that. My third prediction uh, for the UFC in 2024, I'm gonna say that Shavkat Rachmanov will win the UFC welterweight belt. I think just with his resume, his skill set, I think what makes Leon Edwards very, very good, obviously, is his uh, elite striking and his ability to uh, grapple with some of the best in the world and shut down some of the best grappling attacks. Not to mention, he's pretty big for the weight class as well. Rachmanov is a, a very uh, sizable 170 as well, and he can do it both. He can submit you, he can strike with you on the feet. He's very well-rounded. 18 and 0, 18 finishes. I really just believe the momentum, everything that he has going for him right now, the UFC will put him in the position to fight for a title and realistically i just think the confidence and the skill set he has i think he'll probably win the the welterweight championship my fourth bold prediction for the ufc in 2024 i'm gonna say that ian gary is probably gonna fall off a little bit i think he's gonna lose maybe he loses two fights i don't know i just think with everything that's going on in his personal life your wife wrote a book on basically how to finesse young athletes out of money you're a young athlete she's in her 40s you have a kid with her. Your nutritionist is her ex-husband who you are taking his last name. It, the whole thing is just like, just asinine. I, I feel, I kind of feel bad for, for Ian Gary just because like he's in this weird position where it's the mother of his kid. It's also his wife. It's his family. So we get, it, and it's all in the public eye. But I think there's a lot of pressure on him. I think that's kind of why he pulled out of that fight at UFC 296. He liked to do a lot of talking, especially against Neil Magny. And when the shoe gets put on the other foot, he didn't seem like he dealt with it very well. So that's kind of where a lot of this is coming from. I just think that he has a lot of pressure on his shoulders. And my fifth prediction for the UFC in 2024, perhaps one of the more bold ones, I believe that Nate Diaz is going to return to the UFC. I mean, he's talking about it. He's left the door open saying that he would like to come back. I think he got the payday that he probably wanted against uh, Jake Jake Paul. I think there's a lot of good fights for him out there too, potentially. I mean, he could have a fight with Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier is in this weird spot where he doesn't really have many people to fight. It's either like big name fights, title fights, or it doesn't really kind of make sense for him. Another potential fight would be the Conor rematch for Nate. That right there, those two fights are two very big money fights that Nate Diaz could definitely come back for and you could even put those on UFC 300. Maybe do something like a, a Michael Chandler, Conor McGregor, and then have Dustin Poirier and Nate Diaz. Regardless, I just think right now with uh, where Nate Diaz is at in his career, it's kind of now or never. If you do want to come back in the UFC, there is some good potential opportunity right now, and there's some guys in the UFC that are waiting for big fights. Those are my five bold predictions for the UFC. Let me know in the comment section below. Do you guys think that any of these are going to happen? What are some predictions that you guys think are going to happen? I'm very excited for what's to come in the, in the UFC in 2020. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys have any uh, ideas, video suggestions, things you guys want to see. Let me know. Like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time, I'll catch you guys later.